good upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This house decided that it's been this far. Ooh, oh, young Daniel in the lion's den. Jonah in the belly of the whale. I'm not alone, so I can't have been. No, no. the tenets and the whole structure of the party. 
Maybe I'm mistaken. Let us give the Tico a chance. But all I heard anybody say about Tico Lake, oh, we know Tico Lake, Tico Lake used to play steel pan in every night. That must have been his claim to fame prior to that. I've asked around since, and I tell you, Tico Lake wasn't even a good steel pan player. He was sitting all around the road. Tico Lake could not even play the steel pan properly. Yeah, so how can he represent So what I will tell you now, we move forward to last year, and he's taking names off because he wants to see his choice. His choice. He wants to select Gaston Brown as the leader. So anybody, no matter how hard you work for the party, for the branch, for rural south, for this constituency, if you don't support Gaston Brown and Tico Lake is supporting Gaston Brown, get lost. I only need you when it is time to campaign to get me back into office. You are better than that. Because you come from the most loyal constituency of them all. 28 years you put Weber Jr. back into office. When is our party turned on him? And that is part of the reason why I'm not on a Labour Party ticket. Because I saw the disrespect that they had for my father. In the 2004 election, my father received a check from that party. And that was the only check he received. 30,000 EC dollars to run a general election. Some of those men, some of those quote-unquote comrades had half a million dollars, yeah. one million dollars, a million point five dollars of party money. But sometimes you have to look deeper and say, we're all red or we're all blue. Yes. Because not only was my father and I fighting UPP Winston Williams in 2004, we were fighting our own comrades for the disrespect. They looked on Weber Jr for the most part in the Antigua Labour Party as a safe seat. And they have marginalized this constituency. This loyal constituency of St. John's Rural South has been marginalized. For that loyalty, this constituency should be having better paved roads, better drain system. You're supposed to have more scholarships. That party itself should provide scholarships to this area because you stayed loyal. And even 2004 when they said we lost, Weber III, Jr. lost because his own party gave him a check for $30,000 in all. And you know what the check said in the memo section? Yours with comradeship. That is what they did to my father. I am here tonight to put an end to the United Progressive Party governorship over this country. Yes. And we're going to get Tito the snake out of this constituency. We're going to retire his political career. We're going to give him the title in March after he loses the representative of St. John's Rural South Emeritus. Because they like to give these titles to people. We're going to retire him with an Emeritus title. He needs it. He deserves it. He's asking for it because Tito Lake rigged the election at the convention. He rigged the convention. And even worse than that, when they rigged the convention and he get up on the stage behind Gaston Brown, big man like a Tigre who's supposed to represent you, start the ball. The man start the ball up on stage. Right. Well, the man a cry out the eyes because he rigged the election for another man to be elected. Were those tears of joy or were they tears of guilt what he did to St. John's Rural South Branch? That is what I ask you to ask people like when he eventually chooses to come out and campaign and not send his campaign team. Ask him when he was balling on the stage behind Gaston Clown. Was it tears of joy or tears of a guilty conscience? Guilty conscience. Ladies and gentlemen, the plans that we have through Labour Party for this constituency are centered around one main aim to produce jobs in this constituency. Yes. There are a lot of other social problems this constituency have, the roads, the infrastructure, that abomination that they call a basketball court, which was put down by one of the people in this constituency, one of the people who lived amongst you. Not any longer though. Mr. Winston Williams saw, saw it fit that he would spend hundreds of millions of dollars to give you this piece of junk. 
hundreds of millions of dollars. And after that abomination, after that Winston Williams, he can't even run now. He's unelectable. Yes. You know it and I know it. Yes. And now, unfortunately, you have suffered another disaster in the form of Tico Snake. Tico Snake receives 3,000 EC dollars every month for constituency allowance. 3,000 EC dollars times 12 is $36,000 a year. $36,000 a year times five for the five years that he's in office is $180,000 that Tico Lake gets for you. Not for himself, for the constituency overall, St. John's Rural South. What has Tico Lake done for that? When he eventually chooses, when Tico Lake eventually chooses to come up for some beer from underneath the rock which he slid under five years ago, and he comes to your house to tell you to vote for him again because he has done such a poor job. Ask Tico Snake, what did he do with $180,000 in constituency allowance? Ask Tico Snake, you don't want him to tell you, oh, it's better than this, and it's better than that, and I put it here, and I put it there, and na 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 na. Tell him you want an itemization because it is your money. And if he can go and say, oh, you be be so corrupt, and you be be so this, and you be put that on a basketball court, calling that a stadium and a basketball court. Ask him, well, what about you, Tico Snake? Tico Snake, that's $180,000. What did he do? The branch is supposed to be operating that money. You know how much of good that could have done to this constituency? Thank you. You put on some fundraisers with that money to grow that money. That should be able to provide a scholarship. That is supposed to be able to be put in a bank and gain interest. Yes. And provide for people who are disabled. People who have health problems. People who need that little extra. To make life just a little easier in these trying times. And I can guarantee you, Tico, when you ask him that question, he will just slid the back onto that rock from whence he came. Now, in regards to the Antigua Labour Party, we are all die-hard labour rights. Don't let them fool you, right? But when we saw wrong in the party, we don't believe in political expedience. We stand for principle, because we realize in true labour that the graveyard of political parties are littered by the actions of men who stand for political expedience over principle. And that is what is going to do the Antigua Labour Party because they stand for political expedience. They will see that the branch election has been rigged in rural south and in rural north. They will see that the convention has been rigged and there are cases of bribery. They are rather to sweep it all under the rug and act like if everything is hunky dory. That is not good enough because this is a poor man's organization. And if it is supposed to look about you, then how can somebody in the party come and tell you that they rigged a branch election, which is supposed to be for you. Because the grassroots, that is the way you play a part in the party. You support the branch. You support the branch, you offer your support to the candidate, whoever it is, or the caretaker. And that is where my father got his strength, through you. It wasn't his wealth, it wasn't his good looks, it wasn't his education, it wasn't his smile. It wasn't his light skin. It was you who supported my father for 28 years. And if you elect me, I guarantee you that you will have the strongest branch in the Antigua Labour Party, in the UPP, stronger than any of them. Because that is where a candidate gets his strength from. And Tico Lake right now is a whipped puppy. Because he does not have a branch behind him. What he has behind him is a bunch of opportunists and men who do not stand for principle, but for political expedience. All of them are looking to see what they can get after the next four months when they get elected. But what is the plan? You get elected and then what? You carry on like you've done for the last five years? That is not good enough. You have to stand for something. You were elected to this position because we expected better of you to carry on in the footsteps of my father. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take you back to 2018 into 2009. So we heard this gentleman's name, Tico Lake, 
I crossed one down at 46 North and said, Hey, my name is Kiko. Winning from 88 like a Chechen guy. I said, Okay, this is Mr. Tico. My family supported Tico. I'm not talking about my father alone. I'm talking about I supported Tico. My mother supported Tico. Bear Jr. has 10 children. They all support Tico Lake in 2008 2009 election. When he had his whistle stop, nobody knew him. We were driving behind him up in Radio Range and in the constituency. <laughs> this is Tico. I don't really know who Tico is. But the people who Tico up there, yeah, man, my name's Tico, man, my name's Tico. <laughs> and people look and say, who, who is this? I'm be you know. You see, my dad was saying, don't worry, this is Tico, don't worry. He'll learn. He'll, he'll, eventually, you will learn to have an Antiguan answer. Just give him time. Just give him time. He'll, he'll eventually get the hang, the twang back. We supported Tico Lake in 2009, my family. But the day that Tico Lake went into my office and rigged a branch convention for his own selfish purpose, time for him to go about his business. We're going to put him back on that rock, rock from whence he came. Besides that, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what the plans are moving forward. Yes. And that is what I am here to tell you. We're going to re remove the personal income tax. Now, that appears to be anathema to the United Progressive Party. Oh. Their response to that is that, wait, if you remove the income tax, how do you expect to govern a country without tax? Antiguan people have always paid taxes. Personal income tax may be a direct tax that you will get take out from your income every month. But even before personal income tax was introduced, we paid taxes. They were not direct, they were indirect like tariffs and custom taxes. And that is what you need to, to remind them about. Antigua had high customs duties. We always paid taxes. There was never any freeze in Antigua and Barbuda. You paid taxes. It might not have come out your pocket, but you had to pay taxes to tariffs to bring stuff in and out of Antigua. And there were several other taxes. We're going to remove it, not because, oh, put money in your pocket. Not only that, but you see, before 2004, Antigua and Barbuda was known as a tax haven. Very rich people would come to this country because we did not have an income tax and they felt safe in putting their money into this economy. Because Antigua is a small country, it has a small population and it is viewed by the outside world then, not now, as a safe place to put your money. Move forward, 10 years later, we have the financial crisis brought on by the Stanford Company. And we have got to make all efforts to make Antigua and Barbuda a tax haven, to attract very wealthy people and make them certain that they feel that their money is safe in this jurisdiction. Besides that, we have got to reduce or we got to repeal the Magistrates Code of Procedure Act. Yes. That was the act in 2004 where there were a couple rapes and there were a couple um, burglaries in the areas in Antigua and Barbuda and the government before they come up with a policy they made it harder for people who were accused of an act of a criminal act to get bail yes because when before the magistrate's code of procedure act if you went to court you go before a magistrate and the magistrate was able to give you bail right and as a lawyer Bail in the magistrate's court would cost anywhere from five to eight hundred EC dollars. At the present point in time, after the magistrate's court of procedure act, Tough you up. get bail by going to the high court. Tough up. And the judges, the only three judges up there, and they're, they're dealing with high court matters. Yeah. So you would have to wait on jail until they can put aside some time from their other high court matters to deal with bail applications. On average, it is about two weeks before somebody in our system who is considered innocent before considered guilty, proved guilty, can get bail. That is stigmatizing the youth of this country. Yes. You're putting them amongst criminals. Their eyes are opening up to the criminal mentality. And people who are innocent until proven guilty are seeing the other side of a criminal lifestyle behind bars. We need to put that a 
aside, we need to repeal the Madness Code of Procedure Act because it is affecting the young people, it is stigmatizing them, and it's even hardening them to a legal system which doesn't look at them as innocent until proven guilty. It is actually putting them behind bars, and then they have to wait two weeks to get bail, and then after that, they still have to go to court, and then you're proven innocent. But you have that experience of being locked up amongst criminals for two weeks. How can that benefit a society? It turns people off from authority. The police and them, people lose respect for them. Because they put innocent people behind bars. You can't say, oh, I never went to jail. I was on remand. Oh, I, 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 I eventually got bail. I was innocent. But those two weeks can change a person from being an innocent, upright citizen to somebody who will be more willing to commit crime because they've already made contacts. Not all, but it is possible. We need to remove the Magistrates Code of Procedure Act. And for this constituency, what I suggest the party, the Antigua True Labour Party, will be concerned in finding jobs for the working class in this community. Besides Rural West, which has probably the largest working class community amongst it, it is Rural South that has probably the second largest. And in order to find jobs for you, my party, our party, the True Labour Party, will be looking into light manufacturing. We believe that we have a tourism product, a blueprint for tourism already. It has been battled over the years, and for some parts, it's been neglected. But what we suggest, or what our policies are, are that we are going to try to revive it by providing work in light manufacturing. All the clothes, all the toilet paper, all the towels, all the detergents, all the hangers from all the hotels in Antigua and Barbuda will be produced in Antigua and Barbuda. That will provide you with work. It is light manufacturing and it is possible to get off within the first year of our government of this country. That is what we suggest, but that is only one of our plans to find work for you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Antigua and Barbuda to consider legalizing marijuana. It is important for us to have a conversation about it. And that is why the True Labour Party, in the first year of coming into power, will have a referendum on legalizing cannabis. Because too many young men in these communities because they smoke like a roach in their mouth, are going to jail, are being harassed by the police, are being beaten, are being treated like criminals. And I'm saying to you that you, your children, do not deserve to be in that place to be treated as criminals for smoking a ganja. If you smoke a strip, you should not be criminalized. What we suggest is that we even at some point in time we will have a mechanism in place to sell ganja. But it would not be we are legalized ganja today and everybody can just go on the street and sell it or whatever. It has to be a program that is governed by the state. It must be regulated. There must be several branches or distributors of it. Right? People can sell it but they have to be on the books. They have to be paying their taxes. We have to regulate that market. And most of all, when we get into power, is that ganja can stop this deficit that we have that just keeps accruing. We are owing banks, world banks, millions and billions of dollars. We have not had a public account since 2004. The state of the Antigua and Barbuda economy is in a dismal state. And what we are saying with the legalization of ganja, we could pay those debts. Because there has been corruption in the UPB and admitted by Gaston Brown on the 7th of February of this year at North Street, he would be the first to admit that there was corruption in the Antigua Labour Party. Those are not my words, those are his words. You can ask him about them and ask him how much money does he believe that was stolen, pilfered or whatever. But we have to pay that money back. Wherever they got it from, People have debts, and we are creditors. Are we going to have to pay these people back their money? I believe that legalizing ganja should have a five, whatever legislation that we put into effect, 
has to have a five year stipulation on it. And after the five years, it will be considered illegal again. However, we can renew it after we do a post mortem on the effects to our economy, our society, the youth. But at the end of five years, no matter what way, the referendum goes after five years, we should be able to have paid all that money that was pilfered by the two main parties. I believe that is the least we should get out of selling ganja. But that is something that has to be decided by you, not the politicians. You remember before 2004 how UPP and them were going around, we're going to legalize ganja, we're going to make ganja legal. As soon as they got into office, they turn another direction. I am not going to sell your policy just to get into office, but we need to have a serious discussion of legalizing ganja. Ladies and gentlemen, we have four more months to go before a general election is due in Antigua and Barbuda. Yes. The last ten years have been extremely hard to this constituency yes. because you had a government that was a failure in the UPP. And even though we had Winston William as a big tsunami, that tsunami landed in North Grove and Golden Grove with this bit of garbage. This was corruption, right? And then after five years of the great Winston Williams, who came from this community, and this is what he has done to you, we bumped into Tico Lake. I used to play steel pan in Ebonites. And Mr. Tico Lake, I used to play steel pan in Ebonites. That's a bad name. He gets $180,000 for the last five years in constituency allowance. And what has he done with that money? The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And let me tell you how that works. The Tico Lake rigged the branch elections for the convention to elect somebody that the people did not want. And you elect Tico Lake at this general election, do you think Tico Lake will be looking about your interest or his own personal interest? The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And this is his sort of behavior to you because that branch is owned, operated, financed, supported by you. Where was Tico Lake 2004? When the, the UPP unleashed that campaign against the ALP. We never saw a Tico Lake. And now for some reason he feels that he can, can rig a branch election. I want to resurface now. He must be held accountable. And that is why I am out here. Because this branch in rural south is the most loyal, the most efficient, and one that elected my father for 28 years. And you should be rewarded by Tico Lake. You should be rewarded by the Antigua Labour Party. But for some reason, you were marginalized because of your support for Bear Bird Jr. There are many people who, in his own party that did not like that man and did not respect him. And you were marginalized because of your support for him. But that's not going to happen when I get elected. So anybody stand in your way, is standing in my way. And we're going to move them aside. We're going to dash them against the, the shores. The UPP in 2004 told the people of Antigua and Barbuda that they are ready for the rescue. I don't know what they rescued. They must have rescued their own bank accounts from deficits. Because all of them are millionaires now. Yes. That is the only rescue. They rescued themselves from being like us. And in 2009, you remember what their, their, their campaign slogan was? The big blue wave is coming. Stay out of the way of the big blue wave. They even said it's bigger than a wave. It's a tsunami. 
A tsunami is a destructive force. It is not something you can ingratiate yourself to. It is not something that you cuddle, cuddle up with at night. It is not that something that you turn over to and kiss and hug and rub up and make love to. That's what Stay out of the big blue wave. No, they don't even have anything. It's not ready for the rescue. It's not the tsunami. You know what I say? I'm blue. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, I'm blue? Well, I'm not blue. I'm true labor. And we are coming through. Ladies and gentlemen, True Labor Party will be contesting in this next general election. Yes. Yeah, man. We will be fighting for the Antigua and Barbuda people. Because from what I have seen in the Antigua Labor Party is that they are the worst opposition that has ever existed on the planet Earth. They do not work for you. How many pickets have you heard the Antigua Labour Party conducted against the Wadadley power plants? How many marches have the Antigua Labour Party conducted against the Wadadley power plants? How many public meetings has the Labour Party conducted against the Wadadley power plants? Absolutely none. And the reason for that is because the chairman at the time last year, and now the leader Gaston Brown, has never paid a utility bill since 1999 when he became a member of parliament. They don't pay for utilities. Gaston Brown does not know what it is for you to have your children read at night just or do their, their homework and their schoolwork by candlelight. He does not know that you have to go buy cans and put them in the house and mind that the cans don't fall over and burn up your house because he has not paid utility bills since 1999. So when the Wadani power plant hit and our bills keep going up over the years, he doesn't feel it in his pocket. He can intellectualize, yes, I understand. If something goes on 200 a month to 400 a month, it is more money being spent. But he does not feel it. He doesn't have the empathy to understand where you're coming from and the hardships you're going through. So don't pay no mind to those people. Neither him nor Asset Michael pay utility bills. So they don't feel your pain. And that is a problem. Because as you can see, no march, no picket, no public meeting. Now we move on to the CIP. Citizenship by Investment Program. That is a program which will sell the Antigua and Barbie the passport. And what they're going to sell that passport is to give people citizenship. Will allow these applicants not only to be citizens and to vote in Antigua Barbuda, but they will be allowed to buy land like you and I. You do not have to go to cabinet any longer. You do not have to pass cabinet approval how large land you want, what areas this land you're going to sell them. Um, I don't think that they, they, they're entitled this much. We have to save some of this land for the Antigua Barbuda people. They own a passport like you and I. Whatever you are entitled to, they are entitled to it also. And I'm saying to you, somebody who has millions of dollars to buy a quarter of a million dollar passport can buy more land than you and I put together. And somebody who pays a quarter of a million dollars for a passport can buy more land than rural South, everybody in rural South put together. And that is the danger because there will not be lands after this program is put in place for you and your children. You have to stand up and fight against the CIP. And the Labour Party is not fighting against the CIP because they, they, see the, they want to get the greedy little fingers on that money. You see what happened in the other countries that selling their passport is taking effect in St. Kitts and Dominica. Both political parties support the program because if the opposition in these countries did not support the program. There was no way that they, the government could sell the passports to someone. Because the person was saying, if I buy a passport now, we're in November. By March 2014, a new government may take over and tell us, come and collect your money. So they're saying now, if I give you this money, are you certain that the opposition is on board with giving me citizenship, and look at the behavior of Gaston Brown, Asset Michael, and the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party overall. There has not been a picket, there has not been a march, 
there's not been a public meeting again he keeps selling of the Antigua and Barbuda passport they give lip service and say that they're opposed to it and that is about as much opposition that you or I will see read between the lines because if you see Gaston Brown's manifesto that he had last year at that convention what he said was that they realized that they have to get an injection of cash into the economy and what they're going to do they're going to sell land they're going to sell land by making it cheaper from six dollars a square foot to three dollars a square foot now if you cannot afford your rent today or put on electricity in your house how are you going to buy land that they're reducing the price of land for the new citizenship the new citizens in Antigua and Barbuda they have reduced the price so that they can buy this land rural south the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior do you remember when the Antigua Labour Party when they were in government had the practice of selling members of parliament peppercorn prices for land when a member of parliament could purchase land for like ten and fifteen thousand dollars for half an acre or an acre the two men who capitalized on this plan were Gaston Brown and Baldwin Spencer this unethical program where ministers of government who are the trustees of our lands for us they benefited the most and sold themselves lands cheaper than we would get it and now the same individuals Gaston Brown and Baldwin Spencer are now saying that they are going to sell land Gaston Brown actually comes and says it was his idea it was his idea to sell land and he is going to, when he gets into office, he is going to have a code of ethics. Who oh, about the land that you purchased? He purchased land for ten and fifteen thousand dollars to an acre of land that we couldn't get at that price. And when he get that land, he sell that land at the market value. That man has made hundreds of thousands of dollars on our land. Bowen Spencer has done the same, and now he is going to introduce a code of ethics. And Bowen Spencer, when he got into office, he said. His government is going to be transparent and accountable. They need to go be transparent and accountable of the lands that they got for peppercorn prices and give us back the balance. Give us back the profits that they made off of those lands. But this CIP is a danger to Antigua and Barbia. It is a danger to your existence on this planet, in this country. Stay away from the UPP because they're no longer ready for the rescue. They no longer going to drop a, a big blue wave and a tsunami upon you. They're just blue now. <laughs> they're only blue. I don't know where they're going with that. And Mr. Tico, the Yankee Doodle. That is a big disappointment. My family, Vera Bird, Junior, Pickney and his wife, do not support Tico Lake. He's been weighed, measured, and found warden. He has disrespected the branch. He has disrespected you. He's fallen into bed with a group of selfish people who only seek power for personal gain. I advise you, rural south, stay away from this man. But when he comes, when he eventually steps out from on this rock, and he comes to you and tells you, vote for me, with that big old grin, tell him, first of all, he go. Can you play the steel back? <laughs> That's the first question, because I hear you to play all wrong notes. And second, tell Tico the Snake, could you please, before I vote for you, I want you to itemize how you spent $180,000 constituency allowance. And only then will you tell him, I wasn't even going to vote for you anyway, I'm voting for you. That is what you have to tell Tico. Ladies and gentlemen, the next four months are going to be very trying. Yes. We're going to try to go around to, to everybody in this constituency and to spread the gospel about true labor and our policies. It is a large constituency, it's going to take time, but I will be there, I'm going to stick with you, whether I win, lose, or draw, because my father's legacy is in this constituency. Vera Bird, Sr. and his wife Lydia, 
raise their family at Bird Road, that uh, Brian's pastor. That is where they are from. I am not going anywhere. I was absent the last five years because I saw my father going down and I advised him not to run. And it broke my heart to see him attempt to run in this era in 2009. I don't think he should have done it. And we actually thought we had somebody that would have lived up to his expectations. But even towards the end of his life, he was not pleased with the person that he appointed to be his successor. Tico Lake has been a failure. And we are going to rectify that. You have an option. Keep your options open. I hope that you all registered because in the next election, I will put forward my candidacy. I will be going out to see all of you and let you know that St. John's Rural South deserves better. Better than Tigo Lake. Better than Winston Williams. Better than Fillmore Benjamin. You all may be poor, but there's value in people that have remained loyal and people that want to make their lives, their constituencies, their country better. And I will be here to assist you in achieving that aim. So on election day, without fear or favor, vote their bird and true labor. God bless you. Take care. I love you all. I'll be out to see you. I'm only one human being, but I will make the attempt to see all three 2,900 of the registered voters for this constituency. Take care, and God bless you. Bye for now. You're not alone. Live, I'll be right there for you. You're not alone. Live, I'll be right there for you.